Let's do it. Okay, so we're recording and we're broadcasting at the same time. Um, my machine's pretty awesome, so I don't need to worry about it. Uh, let's see. First things first, let's go to um, sharing my screen and let's go here. There we go. Now you guys probably see my screen here. Nod your heads if you say yes. Yes, okay, perfect. Cool, and you guys are all on my right-hand corner here. Um, I don't have my chat up. I'm gonna have it up in a minute here. Chat, there we go. Um, okay, if you can't hear me, chances are you need to uh, turn your headphones on, your volume up, because everybody else can hear me. Um, and then one last thing, make sure I have everybody. There we go, just in case. Okay, stick these guys down here. Okay, so this is the Stop Motion University website. I have a, um, what I'm gonna do very first is I'm gonna walk you through the course. So we're gonna actually look at um, what the course is, how it's structured, how you can interact with me, um, how you can interact with the other students, and how you can build upon um, the various lessons and improve upon them yourself. And, um, and get to a point where um, you are building really good armatures and puppet designs and making something that's both functional and it's not gonna break on you rapidly. So something that, that will uh, basically last you through a production or in another instance where you can actually go and you can make something that you can repair. Uh, that's a big factor, especially in stop motion puppet making. A lot of people don't realize that um, they break and you have to be able to repair them, especially if they're only one puppet. So that's a, that's a big factor. So this is the website. Um, of course you have, and this panel here is just my panel for the course as an administrator. So ignore that. Um, we have the home, which always sends you to this page, uh, the about sections, courses, shop, student access, blog, and contacts. There's actually supposed to be a login and log out up here. Um, sometimes it works depending on the update and sometimes it doesn't depending on the update. So um, not much I can do about it. It has to deal with the code. So your best way to access is actually to go into under student access and go to log in. I'm already logged in. Should just take me straight to the, to the front page. Give it a second. But yeah, so you log in. Um, and then of course, uh, yes, my administrative, administrative, administrative page. So you don't have to worry about that. Let's go back. Okay, so it would log you in, get you to your account. What it will do instantly is take you to your profile once you're logged in. Give it a second, there we go. And this is, this is my profile here. Um, I have you know, all these different functions going on in this area. The two areas that you need to worry about is actually courses and friends. Those are the two ones. Actually groups is another one. If you're not in the stop motion puppet making course, you will be uh, as of Friday. I, will, I have to enter in a lot of people manually. Um, for some reason, they just, when they signed in, it wasn't an automatic thing. So it uh, might have to do with the coupons. Um, anyway, so to access your course, you go here. Give it a second. I think my computer's really <laughs> chugging along here. And then we go to um, your different courses. Now there's four listed on here. They'll notify you if you've completed the courses. So I actually have three of these notified as complete. I'm gonna to go to the uh, stop motion puppet making course, T2A. Give it a second. Come on. Well, anyway, we're supposed to get there by this way. Uh, I think my computer is, is being a little silly because I, I, I'm uploading video at the same time. So the internet connection is gonna be a little off. Um, so once we go into this course, uh, there will be modules, and in each module, um, there we go, in each module, uh, we'll have different sections. So, of course, this is the um, using the website, meet the instructor, who is me, John Akuma, I'm their instructor. Um, puppet beginners course, right there, uh, and then lecture 01, armatures, and then we keep going on, where are stop motion puppets, the story of design, materials, clay characters, wire, Puppet Lecture 2, Block Designs, and basically we're going to go through a bunch of these. And then the build, um, the instructor builds, uh, let's see, well, Lesson 1, Build 2, here they are, Build 1, 2, 3, 4. These areas here are actually the instructor builds. So these are the ones that you're going to have lectures with me. 
Um, this is where I will show you and, and demonstrate uh, the building process, which you can actually go through and watch over and over again. If you missed something, there should be some text in there also, and there should be some guidelines for you to understand the, diff the four different builds. Um, if we go up here to components, this components area for puppet building gets, um, gets updated constantly because a component is an element on a puppet that is either a custom element like a prop or a, a mouth replacement, uh, replacement hands, uh, tie downs for feet, that kind of thing. I'm constantly gonna be updating this over the, over the course of the next eight weeks. Um, and then we have to close out the course and then your final class and then your final. So the final is really simple. It's just, you need to build between, you're supposed to build uh, two to three puppets of your own design. Um, that's the final really. And there's a, there's a, um, a multi-choice questionnaire. It's really simple. You'll pass that really easily. But, um, and then once those designs are approved, your uh, armature wire design or your, your armature design and then your puppet design, um, from there we'll actually be able to pass you through the class and then you can move on to the intermediate class, which is in the fall. Um, let me go back here. All right. So that covers that. Any questions right now? Let me see the chat here. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Type them in right now and I will, I will address them the best I can. Uh, let's go here. I'm going to, sorry, reduce this down. It's in my way. Come on. Uh, here it is. Oh, that's in my way too. I need a second monitor. Okay. So what we're going to talk about right now is characters and design. Um, by the way, this is going to be anywhere between an hour and an hour and a half for the class. Um, the lectures will vary in times, but most of the time they will be a minimum of one hour. So um, don't be afraid of that. Like I said, if you can't attend, uh, they will be recorded. Okay, so a character that uh, we're going to look at, this is a really bad image, honestly. Oops, go here, reduce it down a little bit. There we go. It looks a little better. Uh, characters are based off of the head, okay? So when you are uh, making a stop motion character or a cartoon character, um, you will be basing all of your designs off the head of the character. Meaning, how, how big is your character? So if your character is, uh, let's say seven inches tall, which is actually a really small character, um, each inch would be a head, a head size. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven heads. This half is either measured by the, the ankle to the toe or by the neck, okay? And the reason I left that out is because a half can sometimes be a double or a triple depending on your character. So, for, and we're talking about humanoids, by the way. So the length of the neck is dependent on your design. Uh, but if you wanna be true to human form, you're seven and a half characters tall. Okay, so and I'm using inches because it's the easy way, easiest way to explain it. Now, the width here tends to be two, two head, head widths. So if we draw a circle around this perfect circle, it would be one perfect circle here and one perfect circle there for the width of the shoulders. And then it's kind of one and a half for the hips or it can be up to two. So that's dependent on your character design as well. Everything that you do in puppet design depends on this, okay? Your armature design, your facial animation, your facial, your eyes, your blinks, your ears, everything, your scale all depends on this. Now here's a really good question that you should be asking. How do you determine the scale of your puppets? Are you gonna make a seven inch puppet? Or are you gonna make a 13 inch puppet? Are you gonna make a two foot puppet? Are you gonna make a six foot puppet? You know, how do you determine this? The answer is really simple. It's the smallest puppet that you're gonna have in your scale. So meaning, if I'm gonna make a bunch of puppets and I have a little character that's gonna be a big, a big puppet on screen, but it's gonna interact with these bigger puppets, let's say a child, for instance, that child needs to be big enough for me to animate. If the child is like this big, I can do it with replacement animation, but it's gonna be extremely uh, time consuming to 3D print or carve all those pieces out. So what I end up having to do is I need to scale that character up. So let's say my child is about this big, which is roughly about five to seven inches, right? Um, if I'm doing that, then the next characters will be dictated by him. So he's a child. How big is that child? The child, let's say he goes up to the midsection of this character. 
then I need to determine the scale for that adult. You see what I'm saying? So let's say the child's half, he's, he's seven inches. The adult will be 14 inches tall. So it's all dependent on your smallest character. Your smallest character also dictates everything else, the props, the set, the stage, everything. If you're working with a client and they want action figures, you're set to a scale. You're set to the scale that they want the action figures at, right? So if you say Mego action figures, Mego action figures are the, are the action figures from Robot Chicken. Um, let me put my camera this way so you can, I can actually look at you. So the uh, Mego action figures are the ones that are, um, there we go, are the ones that are used in Robot Chicken and they are uh, molded and cast and there's a whole process with them. So you actually take original figure and alter them, right? To make them animatable. Those specific characters are um, important in the sense that when you have, when you have a, um, a size of that action figure, it's gonna determine the spaceships, the cars, the buildings, everything else. So everything else is based off of that size of that character. So like I'm saying, when you're designing your characters, your puppet design dictates everything else, okay? Now, do you have to stick with seven inches tall or seven and a half inches tall or uh, not even that seven and a half heads tall, sorry. Cause you could do uh, heads that are two inches tall or heads that are three inches tall and then measure from that. Um, no, you can go heads that are four by four by four. So meaning, how do I put it this way? Let's say you have a four inch head and then you have uh, four measurements. So that you're using four heads to measure the body. Those squashed characters that you see with big heads, that's really what I'm defining. So for instance, a Funko Pop. Do you guys know what Funko Pop is? So Funko Pop, let me, let me in fact pull them up for you. Uh, fun, Funko Pop. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. If we just pull up like this John Wick character here, you can literally see he's only two heads tall. You know? so. That makes a big difference in the design. That is a caricature. It's not a true to form human of a seven and a half heads tall. Sorry. Now I'm gonna throw another one at you. Let's do the Hulk. Come back. Images. The Hulk, and this is a good one right there. Uh, this Hulk character, you can see he's more than seven heads tall. He's one, two, three, four, five. So I'd say he's roughly between eight and nine um, heads tall. Superheroes tend to have smaller heads and long, elongated bodies. So gods is, is how we would label them in the Greek and the Romans. These guys would be considered gods. And then the, in the ancient form of gods, they would make them a little bit bigger than human beings. And to dictate that, they would size the head down a little bit and elongate the body or, or build up bulk. So when we design characters for like action figures or for um, specifically like superheroes or, or people that are just of, of major stature, uh, we want to make the head measurement up to uh, about 10 heads. So I think it's a good maximum that you can get, get away with. Anything beyond that, you're, you're making some really extreme things and you end up with like Slender Man or something. And if you guys don't know what Slender Man is, it's a really long, mythical, uh, monstrous creature that walks in the, in the forest and scares little kids. Um, okay, so once again, small head, elongated bodies, and then small, a big head and short bodies. And so these are the extremes that we're gonna be looking at. Let me go back to, um, I lost it because I keep putting this in the wrong spot. There we go. Okay, so the next thing to, to discuss here is joints. Uh, the joint dictates also how you're gonna function within the puppet. Now we're gonna cover a lot of joint making for, um, for puppet design. And one of the big things, one of the big factors in a functional puppet is a functional joint. If you use the wrong joint in the wrong place, the, the puppet will not do what you want it to do. And there's a whole thing about battling the, um, the puppet. When you're animating, and you'll learn this as you go and animate, as you're animating, uh, if the puppet is not doing what you want it to do, chances are it's designed in a way that, that um, didn't anticipate your action or its body mechanics. And really we're talking body mechanics. When you become a puppet builder um, and an animator, you actually become a, a 
body mechanic expert. Um, you'll start studying things of movements. You might try some things like dance or uh, Tai Chi or martial arts of some sort or gymnastics to try to uh, like express and find more movement, more capability. Even yoga actually is a body mechanics. So those factors of your, your joints are going to make a huge difference. We're going to cover that in this course. We're going to bounce through a bunch of these. In fact, we're going to actually look at um, ball and socket designs. So that way you can modify kits um, and, and then turn them into actual function, functioning puppets that'll last you a little longer than a wire armature puppet. The other, the other thing to consider here is the spine or the curvature of your puppet. Um, a lot of puppet designs do not require a spine. The actual stiffness of the puppet is really interesting um, in, in design. But uh, when we want to look at the movement and the factors of the design of the puppet, if you, if you want to do like a ballet character, you're going to have to incorporate a spine into your design. It's important. It's something that a lot of times people go, well, I just need the block, the legs, and the arms, and the head. And that's all I need. That's fine. But if you're going to have them do a ballet performance or something, you're going to have to incorporate a, a reinforced spine area. And we'll talk about that as well. Okay. How do you design a character? Now, this is the key thing. The first thing I would, I would want you to do is to go and to um, start studying other people's designs. And I don't mean puppet designs, I mean caricature, caricature designs. Did I say that right? Yeah, caricature designs. And I want you to, I want you to look at things like, uh, for instance, if you look at Garfield, and you guys know who Garfield is, I'll pull up Garfield just so I'm, I'm not kind of being a jerk here. Pull up Garfield. Images. There we go. So Garfield is a, is a classic character from the 80s. It was a cartoon character, a comic book character, started as a comic book strip, and then got into doing CGI movies and still has CGI shows here and there. And the reason I point out Garfield is Garfield actually has a lot of design to him. Um, he is a, a unique caricature versus when you look at the Hulk, these are totally two different designs, right? And then we get into the Funko Pop, which kind of copies everybody else's designs. Let's go look at the beginning of cartoon character design first, and I'll go here. And this is why I'm kind of pointing at Garfield as well. The very first cartoons were something to look like a human being, but was exaggerated or was taken out of context to become something else. So for instance, Betty Boop, who is a Max Fleischer character, this character here, um, started out actually as a dog that was uh, the boyfriend of this character. And I can't remember his name, unfortunately. And Betty Boop was one of the very first like major characters. There we go, Bumbo, or Bimbo. Yeah, Bimbo, Betty Boop, and Coco. So these are the Max Fleischer characters here. And you'll see that they're three very different designs, the three very different scales. Garfield would actually sit in this scale down here and would be like a fun little character. The design process for designing a, a puppet in a Garfield form factor would be extremely difficult unless you knew the materials. You couldn't just, you could make this just out of clay and wire, but you're gonna have a lot of problems with animating that specific character in that function without having the prior knowledge. So dealing with the character design itself, when we first start out, we need to look at the head, of course, and this character is two heads tall. So it's a small, stout character. This character is roughly between four heads tall, and this character is maybe five heads tall, okay? Um, we want to look at, and what I want you to do is look at character designs and come up with some ideas and think about how you would break this character down into shapes. Get back to my other form. There we go. Into shapes. For instance, we know that the head is kind of a circle. They all kind of have a circular head. And if you look here, they've also done this, uh, and this, by the way, this is from a classic book. I can't remember the uh, figure drawing basics. I can't remember the exact book, but it's a classic. You can probably find it easily. The, there's a circular oval shape here, which is technically just two circles and then an elongated line on the side. There's a square for the, for the base of the pelvis. And then for each of the limbs, they actually use these uh, cylinders. This is a core basic of designing um, with a drawing. So when you're drawing characters out. And you don't need to be good at drawing to, to build or design a character, period. It's just not necessary. Because a lot of the times uh, when you're designing your characters, you're gonna use these base shapes to measure out your character. For instance, remember we start with the head. And let's talk about this as inches again. Okay, so your head is gonna be one full circle. 
and it's going to be one inch. So if we're going to do one inch, we already know that measurement and we already know how big the circumference of that circle is. Then what we can do is we can, we can apply circles the whole way down the body and that will measure out the, the, uh, the length of that puppet. So for instance, this one here is going to be one inch and then another inch. So it's two inches tall, maybe a half of an inch also. Betty Boop will also be, you know, one, two, maybe she's about three and a half, she's three and a half. And then Coco the Clown, he's got a really small head. Let's say it's one inch anyway. So one, two, three, four, five and a half. Okay, so that's how we're gonna measure that character. And we're not counting the hat because the hat will be a prop, okay? Now, when we're, when we're figuring this out, we've measured out our character. So we actually know the scale of that character. We can now design the armature all based of that measurement that we did on the paper, drawing just circles. We can measure out the chest width. Uh, Betty Boop is, because her head is so weird and oval, her, her width is actually the width of her head. So we just goes in the same, uh, kind of the same thing with Bimbo, but he's smaller, so in the, in the shoulder area. So it's actually almost like half a head width. Coco the Clown is actually two head widths wide. So it's one, two. You follow me so far? All right, so now that we have measured out our character completely as circles, we can then, we, oops, sorry, we can then block out the various designs of the character. So uh, for instance, we know that we want a joint up here in the upper area of the arms. We can draw the circles to represent joints. So draw a joint there, draw a joint there. Um, the hip section can also be put in and we can, we can basically section out all these different areas and measure out each one based off of the distance that we have for the character. I'm gonna move head forward a little bit here because this is the breakdown. And I'll, I'll try to make this a little bigger for you to see. Okay, so for instance, oops. The head, let's say that's one inch. Uh, to the shoulders is a half. Then we're going to do another inch to the mid torso. If you're doing ball and socket, you usually use you usually put a uh, between here is like uh, a socket joint, and then you get to the hip. We're, our length for the legs can we can actually lower this down, and this actual section here for the uh, the thigh itself is about one inch. And then to the knee, and then from the knee down to the feet is about one inch, one inch and then half, half an inch for the foot if you want as well. Okay, so we can break these down using those circles and have the different sections. You can do the same thing with the arms. The arm, upper arm is one inch, lower arm is one inch, and then a half inch for the hand. Okay, so we're just using inches. Now remember, we could just do this as heads. So the head, let's say the head is five inches, you would have one head, two heads and then a half head, you follow me? So for the upper, lower, and hand, okay. That's it, okay. Now remember we were talking about joints uh, a second ago. This is a ball and socket joint. It, sits, it usually sits in the hip and usually sits in the shoulder. It gives you a full rotation in a lot of different axes. We'll get into axes once we start designing armatures. Um, the hinge joint, actually goes in only one or two directions, technically forward and back. There's no twist to it. These are the two main joints that we deal with in puppet making. Um, they're, also, they're also very um, useful uh, and we can get away with a lot in our designs for joints. A wire armature tends to function though, however, like a loose noodle. So when you bend it and you bend it again, it'll it'll have multiple bends in that one bend. It will not, won't just bend in one area. You bend it once, it'll bend again. And I'll demonstrate that in our next class, actually. Um, let me go to the next thing here. Let's look at some wire armatures real quick and some different armatures. Okay. Now for this class, we're actually gonna do a couple different things. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about some misconceptions and some design kind of functions. Okay. What we're gonna build in this class is we're gonna build a, um, a clay puppet using wire. We're gonna build a, uh, a fabric puppet using wire and block design. We're gonna do some block design puppet as well. Um, and then we're gonna do a build up puppet. So those are the four characters that we're gonna actually build, okay? Um, most of the characters that we're gonna build off of are gonna be wire designs. Um, and then we're gonna do variances of those designs. 
Now, here I have three, three different versions of an armature build. Okay, one, this first one here, um, and I have her credited here, um, it's Christine. I believe it's Christine, uh, or Christine, I guess Christine. Um, she made uh, a really cool animation with uh, some mice, blood tea and wine, I think it's red wine. Anyway, it's a beautiful film. Um, she basically has, this is her base wire design and it's just a straight wire design. There's actually another wire over top of this design to strengthen what she had done. But this is the pre, the pre uh, strengthening. So it's a really good example of how she twisted her wire. Um, we actually, did, I show you this in um, the lecture uh, that's already pre-recorded. You can actually see that if you want, um, which is in the module. This wire design is a twist design. A lot of people, and we'll go over this also in the future classes, a lot of people will say, don't twist your wire. And a lot of people will say, twist your wire. Uh, I'm not gonna really get into detail about that right now, but I can tell you that you can do either. Uh, they both function for two different reasons. A lot of the times when people say, don't twist the wire, they don't know what the function is of a twisted wire versus what's called a banded wire or a bonded wire. Um, that causes a lot of misconceptions in the stop motion and, and animation field. You can twist wire and have it function for a long period of time. Uh, it has its own purpose versus banding, which actually has its own purpose also. Some instances you use banding and some instances you, you will use twist. There, there's two totally different types of functions and things that you need to worry about. The other factor is um, you'll see wire designs like this. Uh, I, don't if get, I don't have credit for this guy, but you'll see wire designs like this. Uh, this is a kit, um, but the, the key thing here is to point out that this is technically a block design for puppets, okay? A block design is where you're using a, uh, a like a base to stick the wires in. Um, so we'll have wire going into a, a, some kind of base in the chest or the hips or even the feet and the head also. Um, we'll cover wire block design in the class a little bit more. And in fact, there's a whole class just based off of that in the build section. And then and a uh, kind of uh, vamping on this is and why block design is important is because we use block design a lot in ball and socket and armature design. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, this is a ball and socket armature and this is a wire armature. They're absolutely right, but they're both block designs versus this one that is not a block design. So on the far left, okay. The one that you see here, I think is an Anibuild armature. Yeah, it's made by Animation Toolkit. This is their old design. They have a newer design now. Um, fun kits, you can buy them at uh, animationtoolkit.co.uk. Um, there are a lot of other stores online where you can buy armature kits. They're a lot of fun to actually buy and play with and manipulate and modify. We're gonna modify some kits in our class. Um, I have, if you look at my window over here, I have a little, little armature kits that I got from uh, More Is More. Uh, and I can give you guys the link to that site as well. That's in Pennsylvania. But you can get armature kits and armature pieces from all over the world. The main distributors, however, tend to be in either Europe, United States, or um, China. So those are the three main places you can get these things from. Okay, let me see if there's any questions right now. Okay, we're good. All right, let me close these out. Move on to the next section. Let me close this one out too. Okay, let's talk a couple things about materials and then we'll actually get into the head design and um, some other stuff. Okay, so what you'll need for this class, bare bones basic, is wire. You're gonna need some kind of wire. Uh, wire is one of those things that uh, there's a lot of speculation about, oh, I can use this or I can use that. Here, I'm gonna give you the truth. The truth is you can use whatever works for you, um, if, but you need to test it first. So for instance, copper wire um, is expensive in comparison to aluminum, uh, but copper wire is found all over the world. Now there's different types of copper wire, and we discussed this in the modules. If you go through the modules, you'll actually see this, but um, the single band or the single strand uh, copper wire like this, which is like the aluminum wire, um, is the best for making a puppet in terms of availability. So you can find that wire anywhere. The best wire for making an armature out of wire is actually annul annulled aluminum. I can't pronounce it ever properly, but it's annulled aluminum, which basically is aluminum wire that has gone through a heating process. And that heat process in theory 
or in practice, melts the molecular structure of the aluminum wire and bonds it together. So basically you're, you're taking the strands of aluminum and they're tying them together in the heated process and it makes it stronger. Now, uh, if you just bought regular craft wire, it doesn't have that heated process and it will, it'll snap and break a lot easier. Two bends and you're broken. With a, a aluminum wire that is annulled aluminum or armature wire, which you can get on Amazon and in uh, a lot of places throughout the world, um, it has the property of bending with no spring back. Now you bend it in one direction or very little. Spring back is where you bend it one direction and it springs back a little bit. So you spin it fully and it springs back half. Steel wire will actually do that. Steel wire will, you bend it and it'll pop right back to where you had it as close as it could possibly get. That's called a memory, a memory of the wire. And that causes a lot of problems for beginner animators and beginner puppet builders. A lot of times when people are in a different uh, location and they don't have access to materials, they go straight for steel, uh, a thin steel wire that they, they braid or they, they twist, and that's not a very functional or very appropriate wire for crafting. Aluminum annulled wire is the best one to go with, and I suggest that um, if you have the chance or the opportunity to order some, order more than you think you need. Because chances are you're gonna break it and you're gonna to wanna to repair something or you're gonna to wanna to make more puppets or you're gonna get a job and you're not gonna have any of this wire on hand to start your job for making puppets. Um, now there are a lot of different sizes of, of aluminum wire. I don't have any examples here. Actually, maybe I do actually have some examples. Let me, let me see if I can find a basic, yeah, here we go. So I'm gonna show you my screen real quick. Uh, share my screen. Oh, the camera. Hold on. Stop sharing. There it is. Okay. So you can see me. So pull this off of there. I don't need that. This is a basic, this is a basic wire armature that we're going to build for clay. Um, a lot of people will see this and go, no, that's not how you do it. This is for clay. Okay. This is not for um, anything else other than clay. There's a bunch of reasons that things are twisted, why they have bones. We'll talk about that in a different class. This is uh, 1 16th, I believe, is the wire size for this. So if you're looking at what size of wire you need, this is 1 16th. On the other end, this is 1 8th. You see the difference in the size? They're actually held parallel to each other. Now the 1 8th wire is the same width as a 1 16th twisted or banded in two pieces. Uh, the reason that we go with a bigger wire, um, it has a different kind of bendability and retains its size. The other thing too is, uh, in my personal preference, I like to use this more than I like to use a twisted wire or a banded wire. Um, this will break, this will cause a lot of issues. Um, but for me, this lasts a lot longer than a twisted wire, mainly because I'm not putting stress on the twist. But I would not use this for clay. I usually use this for like uh, foam latex. Sometimes I use it for silicone. Um, and I like to actually use it with um, build-up puppets or um, not build-up puppets, sorry, foam and fabric puppets with block design. It's a, it's a really fun wire to use. Okay, so those are the two that I mainly use. Those are um, 1 16th and, um, and 1, sorry, I screen again, and 1 uh, eighth of an inch. Okay, now we can measure these in millimeters. And the standard measurement actually for puppet design is in millimeters or centimeters. So just forgive me if I'm talking in inches, um, but really the standards are in millimeters and, um, and uh, centimeters. Okay. Now to measure your stuff out, you're going to need a ruler or you're going to need some calipers. Um, just, uh, let me see if I can actually show you calipers instead of asking, does everybody know what calipers are? Um, and by the way, we have all this, all the, all the uh, supplies and the tools list in the module. So you can go through the module, you can see, actually find all this information. Um, calipers, measuring, I spelled it wrong. Okay, so here we go. These are calipers and we, as puppet makers, need to have something with some accuracy to it. When you get into armature design and armature building, you're gonna need a pair of calipers. Um, it's just mandatory. Otherwise you have to use a ruler and you're not gonna get accurate measurements. The inside, or let's say you wanna measure the outside of an object, you would use the pinchers here. And then the inside will actually use the outside of these. So you can measure the inside of uh, diameter or the inside uh, length 
or size of an object, like a, pit, uh, a tube of some sort, will be the outside. And basically a dial is really what I prefer because I hate replacing batteries and throwing them in the trash. Um, but you can get a digital version. Digital version will probably be a little bit more accurate or a lot more accurate than a dial, but I prefer the dial because I just don't like the waste, okay? Um, I suggest highly that you buy a pair if you can and order them. Um, you can go cheap. I actually have a pair of calipers somewhere around here that have um, no dial and they're just basically a um, like this version, okay? But definitely get yourself a pair of those. All right, um, now let's talk about a couple things here. And then we can move on to um, what we're gonna design. Okay, the very first thing and the very first assignments that I want you to worry about and think about here in this, in this class, and we're gonna cover this in the next class at the beginning, and then we're gonna go into the full build um, after that. The very first thing that you need to consider here is what is your character gonna look like, okay? So I want you to question yourself. What do you wanna make? So it's a hard question, actually. Um, it's not an easy answer. Uh, some of you might already be inspired by something. Some of you might even be like, oh, well, I've wanted to build this my whole life, and now I have this design that I wanna, I wanna work on. The issue ends up being, though, however, if I throw the question at you and you haven't already thought about that, it's gonna take you a minute to figure it out. So the assignment for the next class, um, you don't have to turn in, honestly, but it's for yourself. Think about what you wanna make. So for instance, if you wanna make Garfield, there's Garfield, you know? Uh, he's got a head, he's got a body, he's got all this stuff. There's a lot of design areas that we need to consider and think about when we do this. And because we're doing clay characters in the next course, in the next lecture, um, and wire armature design, we're, uh, we could do a character like Garfield. So that's why I'm throwing this at you. We can pretty much do any kind of character that we want. Close this down. Okay. I have here, uh, this is uh, Figment. This is the dragon from Epcot who doesn't exist anymore. Um, Epcot kind of retired this character many years ago. He was a great character and this is a maquette. And it, when you're making uh, molding and casting and, and all this other stuff, you really wanna have a maquette design. So in our next class, we're actually gonna just design the head. Uh, we're gonna sculpt a head. And then we're gonna use that head actually as the base of our character. We're gonna measure everything out, our armature and all that other stuff based off of this character's head. Um, and then from there, we'll build the rest of the, the puppet with clay. But I'm pointing to Figment because Figment is uh, one of my favorite characters. And it's something that I am interested in, in building. I actually have a, a slew of characters. I wanna make the, the luck dragon from uh, the never ending story. I wanna make you know Beetlejuice. I wanna make like, all these different characters. And those are the characters that uh, have already been designed. So we're kind of cheating in that instance. We already know the scale in, re in relationship to the head. And that's one of the things that I want you to think about. Find a commercial character, make it easy for yourself that you kind of want to build or you want to make. It'll make it a lot easier in that term. So you can actually design and figure out what the scale is going to be for you, what the, um, the proportions are going to be. They're already there for you, but we can measure based off the head and we can just build from there. Now to break down those heads though, for a sculpt, we're gonna start with a circle, a sphere. So it's not with a sphere of clay. And then we're gonna do our different lines um, to build off of those lines. Uh, this is a drawing, by the way, so we're actually built a little bit differently than this, but we're gonna do cutting of angles. And I'll talk about the materials in a second about how we're gonna deal with this with the clay. But we'll cut off the different shapes and we'll add and apply. And eventually we'll, we'll section off the brows, the nose, the mouth area, there's a hairline and then the various sides of the head. And I'm pretty much gonna stay standard with this, what's going on in this image for our first clay build. Um, so that way I can demonstrate to you how that's done. Um, so that way you can break down the character. Our first character is not gonna have, um, uh, what do you say? Uh, eyeball, uh, what do you call uh, Beads, beads or marbles in the eyes. We're not gonna do that for the very first one. The second one, we will have that but I will, uh, I will do basically kind of a similar situation that's going on here. Close out figment. Okay, go back to the materials and then back to design at the same time. In fact, let me close out design and then we'll go to the materials. Um, I think it was in the website, where is it? Come on, there we go. Okay, so Max Fleischer, I want you to pick a character, right? So we have Max Fleischer has lots of different options. These are old characters, um, even from things like uh, Popeye the Sailor Man, uh, Futurama characters, even though it's not Max Fleischer. 
Uh, let's go to the next one. Disney characters are actually a really in interesting way if you want to design something or build something. I definitely suggest going with the classic designs, not anything modern, because more modern stuff has more detail. Because uh, if you try to do Ariel from the um, Little Mermaid, you're going to hurt yourself <laughs> mentally trying to break down how that character gets broken down. Go with stuff that doesn't really have a lot of crazy hair and long hair. Go with something that has uh, really squashed proportions. Uh, your first design should not try to be seven uh, heads high because it gets more complex, especially with the hands. Go with something that's more simplistic. And that's one of the big factors with the, the early cartoon characters and why they went simplistic, because it was just easier for them and it was faster. As you build, as you go along, you will get more and more advanced in your sculpting and in your, in your designs. So uh, don't be afraid to keep it simple the first time. Uh, I think I have one more. Uh, we have the Funko Pop. You could definitely design off of based off of Funko, or you could design off based off a, a, a superhero. Once again, I would much rather you squash your characters, your first designs, instead of elongating them. That's why Garfield is such a good, fun character. Um, okay, let me close that out, and then let's talk about one last thing: what you're going to need for the next class. Um, so you're going to need wire. Actually, the first thing you're going to need is a pen and paper because you're going to do drawing. Second thing you're going to need is wire. Uh, and then you're going to need a couple other things. And those things tend to be glue. So Zap-A-Gap is basically super glue. That is a different, similar formula, but has a little bit different properties, property. It's a little thicker than super glue. Uh, it has a, they actually give you a little bit more. It has a, um, an applicator that is very useful. And another thing about Zap-A-Gap is there's a thing called a kicker. So a kicker is actually a, as a spray or a little droplet that you could use. So you put your glue on your object, you hold it in place, and then you spray it, and then it's permanently held together. You, don't, you could step, separate your hand from the object. You don't have to worry about it because um, it's glued instantly. Otherwise, you have to sit there for five minutes and hold it. The other one to think about in the future class, uh, we're going to look at uh, rubber cement. Barge cement is an industry standard. Uh, they change the formula a couple times. You can get different types of formulas in different locations all over the, the world, um, but barge uh, in the red label, it tends to be the most uh, widely used. It's also extremely uh, nauseous, so you want to use it in open space. And in fact, in any of these instances where you're using these glues, these adhesive glues, you want to have your windows open. Um, you will get allergies from them. If you can, use a ventilator with an organic filter filtration on it. Um, but you should use some kind of open air ventilation. Don't be doing this in a closed room with no fans going. You want to have a window open or something, or do it in your garage. Um, I can tell you, for instance, I, when I worked at Disney, I used Zappagap, uh, and I used maybe three bottles in one day, and I had the worst allergies for a week. In fact, I couldn't breathe for a whole day because um, they, they had the air conditioning going, they had the doors open, but it was the sheer amount of glue that I used was emitting in the room, and um, it, it literally was one of the worst uh, allergy sessions I've ever had in my life, uh, lasted for a week. So be careful. Um, hot glue guns are great for doing things like felt. So we want to be aware that uh, if you have a, a, there's a couple different versions actually of these, these guns. You want to use a, a very low wattage, a very low heat hot glue gun, which is the smaller craft ones. Then there's a high heat, which is used for set building. We use that a lot in set building, which is uh, our high temperature. It's a, it's a bigger gun with a bigger piece of glue, uh, glue stick. Or you can get a variable temperature one and save yourself a lot of hassle instead of having two. You can actually control the temperature of those. Those are actually really cool. Um, let me go back here. Okay. I think I lost my chat. That's okay. Participants and click. There we go. Okay. Admit lobby issues. Out. Okay. She's joining. Okay. So the hot glue gun is definitely another choice. In uh, Espanol, I think they call it silico or silicone is another way of describing it for the glue stick itself. Um, I don't like to refer to it as silicone because um, we use silicone as a casting material and there's actually silicone glues that um, are molding material, silicone glues that are not hot sticks and it will get really confusing. So this is technically just a hot glue, okay? White glue um, or school glue or paper glue is a really useful in a lot of instances for making puppets. Um, it's not as durable as say like Zappagap or barge cement or, or rubber cement, but it will get the job done in a lot of ways. It's not very flexible. You can, if you put a lot on an area, it can be flexible, but its adhesion will actually suck. It won't really work very well. So you want to be aware of that. I've seen people actually make 
uh, arbiters with just hot glue and white glue, and they functioned for their productions, but um, they did have limitations. So just be aware of that. Here is a fabric adhesive. Uh, there's actually another one. Um, this is Fabri-Tac. This is actually a very well-known one. We call this actually liquid silicone glue. That's why this calling this silicone glue is a little bit uh, misgiving. Fabric silicone glue is really useful for uh, making clothing and also using it for uh, dealing with felt puppets or fabric puppets. I just want you to be aware also that this takes a long time to permanently adhese. You can have fast cure ones, but they're not as good. And then uh, these take roughly about 16 to 24 hours to actually permanently adhese uh, pieces together. Um, there's an alternative to this that I would talk to you later about. JB Weld is another glue that we're gonna look at and use in upcoming, um, in pretty much all our builds. You don't have to use JB, by the way. You can use what's called just an epoxy glue. Uh, it's a plumber's glue that you can get, or a, uh, a steel adhesive glue that you can get in uh, hardware stores anywhere in the world um, that sell plumbing supplies. Uh, JB Weld is, is basically two epoxies that you mix together, a gray, or black and a white, or a gray and a white that makes another gray. Uh, they do have other versions that are like green and white or blue and white. You basically just mix them together and you have about five minutes to work with this. You, you glue your pieces together and then you let it sit for 24 hours and then you have a super uh, rock hard kind of glue that won't break, or in most cases won't break. Crazy Glue is very similar or Plasti Loca is another version, or uh, Cola Loca is another version um, super, of super glue or Zappa Gap. Very similar. This is more available around the world under other brand names. So if you can't find uh, the Zappa Gap, which is up here, this one here, you can definitely use Crazy Glue. It'll be the similar one there. Okay. Loctite, and this is a five minute epoxy. And I'm pointing this one out. I can't get this in Mexico. I'm in Mexico City. So I actually can't find this glue. But this is a great glue for um, using in armature making if you need something fast, quick, and get it done kind of job. These are also great for repairing armatures that have broken, the wire armatures that are broken at you because you can use aluminum tubing and stick aluminum wire in there and use this and it will, it'll help function in uh, a, a jiffy. Um, but if you, can find five, if you can find the five minute epoxy, I definitely suggest you getting a, a, a packet of it and uh, keeping it handy. Mod Podge. Now Mod Podge is probably one of my favorite glues um, that exists. It's basically white glue in a jar. Um, it is super versatile uh, and comes in various uh, thicknesses and you can use it for all sorts of things, including glazing. You can actually glaze objects with it um, by brushing it on. And having, having a jar of glue versus having a squirt bottle of glue is a big advantage in some instances because you can paint thin layers and not have to worry about Clogging, clogging up the nozzle of your, your glue. Um, and we're missing, we're missing one on here. Fabri-Tac was up there. Uh, actually, I have a bottle at, I put it away, darn it. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find you the fabric glue on, on um, Safari, because there is a glue, um, fabric glue. I can't remember the name of it. Here we go, tacky glue. So this tacky glue here um, is actually probably my favorite fabric glue. It will, it looks like and smells like regular glue, but the formula is slightly different. And the reason why you want to use this type of glue is in most cases it will, um, it will be flexible with the fabric that you use when you're gluing fabric to itself. So if you want to make a seam for a puppet and you just want to use glue, you don't want to use um, a thread, you don't want a needle threaded, and you don't want to use barge cement, it's best to use something else that's kind of available. And this is the alternative. So tacky glue is a great option. Uh, I do have to warn you that um, it's better to use it for seaming uh, the hem of clothing, meaning like, uh, like where the cuff happens on a shirt and you fold that over. It's really good for that. Um, gluing joints in the arms, not the ideal, but you can use it. Um, and we're talking about fabric, by the way. But it is my favorite fabric glue, hands down. So it's definitely a, a, a useful uh, product to use and have, have handy. Okay. Um, Silpoxy. And uh, this is kind of a secret weapon in molding and casting and puppet making. Uh, any of you guys that are my um, Kickstarter backers, Kickstarter backers from um, 
uh, the Molding and Casting Resource Manual, probably are familiar with this in the text version of the book. Uh, Silpoxy is made by SmoothOn and it is a, it's basically like high-end uh, rubber cement. The only way I can really describe it because it kind of smells similar. But it, in a lot of instances, this is the glue that we use for gluing two pieces of silicone together. And the reason uh, that's important is if you rip a, rip a puppet, there's two ways you can repair a silicone puppet. And we'll talk about this in the intermediate course. This is the beginner's course. We really won't go into silicone so much. But if you happen to have a silicone piece that you bought from a, a, a manufacturer of silicone hands, because they do exist, um, and it rips, you can use this silpoxy and push it back together and actually have the puppet repaired somewhat um, to a point where you can use it. And then of course, there's alternative silicone glues for fabric mainly. Okay, so that is our materials list uh, for the next class. Oh, wait, I am missing clays here. Let's go to clays. Oh, and then one other thing here. Let's go here. Uh, this is taken, I think, from uh, stopmotionanimation.com. It's the, uh, the forum website. If you're not familiar with that website, you should become a member. It's Anthony Scott's website. Um, stopmotionanimation.com is free uh, membership. And it's basically just an open forum where people kind of discuss and share their stop motion uh, builds and their ideas. Um, and this is from one of their tutorials that they had up there at one point. Uh, it's a rough drawing, but it basically gives the basic demonstration of arbiter uh, tie downs. And we're gonna make some tie downs. So in the next class, you're gonna need uh, what's called a nut, a screw, and some uh, an another nut of equal size. These are wing nuts, so they have little wings on the sides of them. And we will need to put armature um, tie downs into the puppet to allow it to stand into our armatures. Uh, this is basically like a, a rough table that they had drawn in here, and then they have the screw and the bolts going into the foot. We're gonna need this for our next class, um, or at least I will need it. You could just watch and then figure out what I'm doing later. You can alternatively, substitute these uh, wing nuts for just the same size uh, nut. If you can't find wing nuts, you'll be okay with those um, and be able to get away with them. I suggest you get at a bare minimum, a one and a half inch length of a bolt. Uh, you may want longer, uh, it just, it's up to you. Um, when I animate on really big stages, stages that are over three feet by four feet, I wanna have something that's almost a half a foot long, 12 inches long, a tie down uh, rod, because I have long arms, I can reach the back of the table and stick it into the hole, to the hole and then tie down the, the foot. And so the, that's so the puppet will stand up properly. There's alternative methods to this, we'll discuss in the other class, I'm not gonna discuss it here, but there are alternative methods for tie downs uh, that are equally as effective and serve a totally different purpose. Okay, shut, shut that out and... Let's see, go back here. Um, and then let me talk to you one last thing about clay. Sculpey is, there we go. Now Sculpey is, um, is a very easy clay to use. We could definitely use this in our designs and our builds. I'm gonna use it in our next build. Um, there's two different kinds. Let me, let me go here, products. See if they can find a Sculpey firm. Scopey medium, air dry, non dry. Uh, let's just do Amazon. Amazon gives us the best example. Com, and let's go Sculpey. Okay, here we go. So Sculpey comes in lots of different forms. Uh, there's, it comes in color. They have Primo, just different kinds. Um, I suggest that you, if you're gonna get into using Sculpey for making puppet builds, be aware that Sculpey is very fragile. It will break. Um, you will have problems with it. And um, you need to treat it with love and respect. Um, something that we didn't talk about is epoxy putty, which, let me see. This, this little head here, this body, these bone pieces are actually epoxy putty. You will need epoxy putty of some sort. Uh, epoxy putty is, uh, what do you call it, uh, propoxy. And I don't think I had it in the images. Let me show you that. If you want to use propoxy with, um, bouncing around here. Oops, there we go. You want to use propoxy with Sculpey, and that'll allow us to, um, to get the best 
functionality and strength out of the Sculpey. If you just did Sculpey on itself, it's not going to work as a puppet, okay? Um, and we're just going to make components. Like I mentioned earlier, there's things called components. We're going to make components, and specifically, we're going to make the head component, okay? Alternatively, you don't have to use Sculpey. You can use, uh, by the way, once again, Sculpey Firm, I suggest. It's the, it's the best to work with. Um, if you want to use colors, you can use colors with the other ones. But uh, you may want a pasta maker uh, for clay, and you may want a hammer um, or a mallet to soften your clay because uh, on its own, you have to process the clay before you start working with it. That's something that we'll think about. Um, and I'll demonstrate that in the next class. Uh, let's go Propoxy. So this Propoxy 20, you see there's different packages. If you want to get this, definitely. If you can, order this. Okay, this is the best material you could possibly get for your puppet making besides aluminum annulled armature wire, annulled aluminum armature wire. Those two are it. You really just need those and the, and the, and the nuts and bolts. All your puppet making can just be that if you really wanted to. Um, the reason why this is important is because it's a two-part epoxy that you take and you adhese together and you make a putty. And then that is a malleable uh, substance that can go on armature wire and make, make those little components, okay? I use it for the base of heads, um, and then I sculpt over those. And I'm gonna show you that in the next class. Also, instead of using Sculpey, we can also use, um, it's Magic Sculpt is the one, the best, best way to, okay. So Magic Sculpt is a, a two-part epoxy also, but this is, has a longer cure time. There's another one called Milliput, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, there's epoxy sculpt. Maybe the milliput will show up in here. There's lots of different, let's see, freeform air. So lots of different sculpting mediums uh, that are epoxy based. So it's an artificially based chemical that you can mix the two together. It becomes rock hard and it's really the best thing that you can use for um, having a solid rock hard object to sculpt. A little difficult to get into sculpting though and you need to practice a lot with it. And once it's built, the only way that you can alter the shape of this object so that's sculpted with this magic sculpt is sanding, drilling, or grinding. Other than that, you can't do anything else once it's hardened. Uh, there's milliput. Milliput is the one that's usually found in Europe. So um, I would suggest if you wanted to do, and you couldn't get magic sculpt, I would go with milliput. It's a really good substance. It works amazing. Um, same kind of theory, um, same kind of substance, okay? Alternatively, there's air dry clay. So like this DAS air hardening modeling clay. Uh, is basically a paper clay. Paper clay sculpting traditionally is done for like uh, marionettes or hand puppets. Paper clay is also extremely useful for stop motion puppets, um, but you just have to be aware that you need to have something hard in the base underneath, okay? All right, that should cover clays right there. The other thing to think about here, K and S tubing. Oops, I spelled that wrong. There we go, it's spelled wrong, let me go back. There we go. KNS tubing is uh, from a company in the United States. You can get it in Europe. You can get it in the United States. Other than that, it's extremely hard to find. You might have to find an alternative in the country that you're in. Um, so depending on where you are in the world, uh, KNS tubing is the, the best option, but you can find alternatives that are generic tubing from China or whatever. Um, but the point I'm, I'm coming at here is that KNS tubing is the, is the material that we use for tubing for puppet making. It's the brand that is the industry standard, a high quality brand that comes in lots of different formats like aluminum, copper, uh, copper, brass, and steel. No copper, sorry, aluminum, brass, and steel. Um, they are the standard that we kind of go with uh, for making all sorts of different um, components. If you wanted to make an arm, and I'll show you with an armature here, let me share my screen with you. I'll share my camera. If you wanted to make an arm, let me pull it back a little bit, like this ball and socket armature. By the way, this is uh, an armature that was built by my friend Eric Serrato. Nice puppet design. He has KS tubing for the head, so you can put a head on there. He also has made it so you can take the components apart. So the hands actually come separate from the arm. This is really important in your designs in the future to, to consider and think about, especially with wire armatures, when we do go into wire armatures, and you want to you want to repair an armature it's best to be able to take the sockets out at the arms. So KNS gives us that advantage. 
And I wanted to stress that to you. It's, it's, a, it's a very good option for you. And I don't want you to feel, um, feel locked into just gluing everything together. You don't have to. You can make your, your puppets modular. In fact, your heads, your heads should always be modular in case you need to repair the head, repaint it, or change the body completely, or put clothes on. Another fun thing to think about is if you're going to have costume changes and you're doing something like a ball and socket armature, you want to be able to take the head off so you can get the clothes off in a lot of instances like t-shirts. Because sometimes a, a Velcro seam on the back is not what you want. You want an actual t-shirt to go over the head area. All right, so that should, um, that should cover us. We've, we've covered quite a bit. Once again, your assignment for next week or something to think about over the week is to figure out what kind of character you're gonna wanna use. Um, you're gonna want to figure out the design that is gonna be appropriate for you. Once again, I suggest that you look at using um, a squash character. So something that is not seven heads tall, something that's more like in the realm of five to three. Uh, think about that. Also consider um, the length and the size that you're gonna actually make this at. So how big is this character gonna be? You do not have to do this solely based off of your, off the top of your head. You do not have to physically design this if you don't want. Go ahead and pick a character off the internet. Grab like uh, something simple that you think is cute or that you want to use. Um, I may actually go ahead and try to do that myself when I'm building my character. Um, I'm in a Max Fleischer kind of mood right now. So uh, that's been my mood for the past month. So I actually might make a, Ma a Max Fleischer style character. Um, so I just point, point that out to you. You can definitely do that kind of uh, a thing. Um, don't be afraid. And then the other thing too is I'm, I'm reachable at pretty much any time. You can email me at contact at stopmotionuniversity.com. That is my instructor email. So once again, contact at stopmotionuniversity.com. And um, you should feel free to have interaction with me at any time. So feel free to email me. Feel free to uh, message me on Facebook if we're Facebook friends. If you have questions, if you have problems, if you want to show me something, if you um, just want to say hello, don't worry, I'm here for you, OK? Um, if I don't get back to you, it's usually I'm in a production job. I, I do things as a freelance uh, animator, director, and, and builder uh, recently. And, and I'll share uh, what I just built recently so you see that I'm not all wind here. Um, share my screen with you one more time. There we go. I recently had to um, do an animation for a rap artist named Gunna. This is uh, somewhere in New York. I don't know the exact location. But that's the little puppet that I had to build for the animation. And I actually animated all the scenes uh, with the help of my animation assistants. Uh, my little studio is called Casa de Animacion in Mexico City. And it was for Gunna for his Skybox video. I also did a lot of other design work. In fact, I'm still doing, I have to do design work today for Gunna. So I'm, do, I'm still doing work for them, uh, for that label and for that artist. Um, I had to make a CG version of the character. And this was a proof of concept for the director. Um, who designed the album cover. I actually ended up going and doing a short little animation for them in CGI. So I basically integrated CGI and stop motion together. Um, this is a CGI character that's based off the stop motion character that I built first. And then we did some CGI animation. They had this whole thing in space, so it made sense. I also had to go back and do um, some designs for Spotify for this artist and for their um, concept poster for the sale. Um, this is Young Thug. And I did a lot of designs in ZBrush, uh, Wheezy, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, <laughs> just different characters. And I had to build all these different, different um, characters here based off of their faces. And then CGI versions that were painted. I really would have loved to do, do, have done these characters all in stop motion, but there just was no budget for it. There was a smaller budget for uh, the poster and less time. Okay. Get to this is all proof of concept stuff here. And then there's an actual render for a test render. Okay, get through these drawings here. And then go back down here. And then we get to the actual build. There's Gunna with the action figure that I designed. So um, I, I with, with Spike Jordan, who is the director, him and, I, him and myself designed this character. And then this got sent out to a um, graphic artist named Wolfgang in Germany and him and his team went and did a render. And then somehow, <laughs> I don't know how they did it, but they sent it to Spotify without notifying me. And then it got turned, and I had pitched the concept that it was gonna be an action figure um, to Spike. 
and Spike, I guess, pitched it to Spotify and Spotify went, instead of hiring Spike to do it, went and just made it themselves and uh, took his idea. So they made the action figure that was originally my concept. So it was really interesting. Um, the back plate, which was also my concept here. And then um, th we're gonna go into this kind of design. This is a block design using ball and, so ball and socket uh, components. Uh, this is the puppet that I just recently made for uh, Gunna for his Wanna album. Uh, this got sent out to him recently. This is the final build itself. A lot of spikes all over the place and uh, actual clothing. We're gonna go into clothing in our class, by the way, so you don't have to worry about that. We'll cover a little bit of that. Get the beginner's level of clothing. And that's it. Those, I had to do two of them, by the way. And that's, our, that's, that's my build that I had to do recently. And we're gonna cover this. We're gonna do a lot of building um, through, the, through the course. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna talk to you a lot about the various things that we, we need to address uh, in design, a lot of the problems that we're gonna have. And I want you to feel free to access me. I want you to be, feel free to open and communicate with me. I'm here for you. And especially if you have any uh, things that are blocking you. Um, let, me, let me close on two things. Um, first, I'm gonna tell you about the, the, the length of the course, and then I'm gonna open up questions so you can ask me questions um, through our Zoom session here. So uh, the first is uh, this class, the lecture series is actually eight weeks long. So you'll be on a roller coaster ride with me for eight weeks. Um, I have thought about it a lot. I'm gonna keep the classes at this time. Uh, is it the best time for me to actually have the, the longest amount of time available to be able to discuss puppet building? Uh, all my other times, uh, like I have four other classes that I teach, they only get an actual hour. We're gonna have anything between an hour to two hours at the maximum. And um, Wednesday at this time is the best for me uh, to be able to do that instruction. That being said, these classes are gonna be recorded and I'm gonna post them privately for you to have access to. So if you miss a class, don't fear, you can actually access the lecture. If you wanted to go back and listen to them, you have all the right to go ahead and do that. Also, if you're working and you wanna hide the fact that you're listening to a lecture and you stick the little headphone in your ear, you can do that. So if you need to work full time, you just wanna listen, listen to me ramble and talk crazy, uh, definitely feel free to, to listen to me while you're working, all right? And then go back and look at the material. Now, um, the modules are open. Oh, so it's eight weeks for the lectures. The class actually is open to you for one full year as a student, as a paid student and as a Kickstarter backer, you have access for one year to the class content and you'll be able to go back and, and find the information that you may have not had or you may have forgotten or that you need to resource uh, reference, okay? Um, I should have handouts for you throughout the time period. So there'll be some PDFs that you can download, some templates, um, that are just specifically for, for you. Do not share them. They're just for you as students. Um, uh, the other thing is uh, you have up to one year to actually take the final um, to earn your certificate for this specific class. So the eight week lecture is, is solid for our, our session. And then um, if you wanted to attend the intermediate course in the fall, you have to finish the course within the, the three month period. Um, of the beginner's course to be able to be admitted into the intermediate course. So that's, that's really the, the key thing there. But the intermediate course will actually go throughout the year. So intermediate, we do seasons. Um, so winter, spring, summer, fall, each one of those seasons will have an intermediate course. So if you don't finish in the, in the three months, you can finish in six months and still go into the intermediate course and say the winter. So that's, that gives you the option. Okay, now I'm going to, um, I'm gonna open up questions for all of you. Um, if you have uh, any questions at all, okay, I see a couple things here. I'm gonna answer those first, and then I'm going, to, um, I'm going to open up the forum for you. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so for the next assignment, should I think, uh, this is by Mohammed. Uh, should I think or use any character but ones that don't have eye beads? No, you can design a character. You can pick a character that has eye beads. Round eyes are standard. I'm talking about you designing a character or you finding a character that you want to make. And in the next class, I'm going to cover two different types of uh, sculpts. I'm going to cover uh, one that is going to be for our base character that's just a sculpty sculpt. And then I'm going to cover one that is a block 
where we're gonna insert our eyes into and then cover with the material. So that way we can use and move those eyes. These are the two heads that we're gonna do to build next class. So we're gonna cover a wire armature design and we're gonna cover a head design so we can build off of that armature wire. Um, polymer clays, Sculpey is a brand yet. Yes, polymer clays, yes. You, Sculpey is a brand, there's Fimu and there's a couple others. Um, they all work. They're actually cosplay is the new hot thing on the market, which is really hard to find. Um, you can try to order it online, but I think they're sold out. Um, cosplay is the first clay that's actually bendable. So it's the first poly polymer clay that's bendable. I haven't been able to get any because I'm in Mexico. I do communicate with the owner of that company every once in a while. So uh, hopefully he'll be able to send me some soon. Um, mallet, yes. Use a mallet to smash your clay and, and soften it. That's a good one. Another thing to think about also is we're gonna use, um, we're gonna bake our clay. So you're gonna need to use some kind of oven that can go to a low heat, um, prefer preferably anything over a 120, which is close to boiling, um, 150, actually 120. I gotta, I gotta look at my specs, I think it's 200 is boiling. Anyway, um, we wanna look at things that are, um, temperature sensitive. So polymer clays are temperature sensitive. We wanna be able to boil water and stick polymer clay in the water and then be able to pull that out. We also wanna be able to bake in an oven and we wanna be able to put the clay in something that won't affect smashing the clay, something that's soft. So uh, there's a thing called Arabian sand or play sand. We can also use play sand and you take a dish, stick the clay in the, on top of the sand and then stick it in the oven and that will keep your clay from, um, from having uh, impressions pressed into it by stuff like, uh, or burning it from stuff like uh, aluminum foil. So that's something to consider. Um, you can use milliput instead of epoxy putty, but you're going to notice that it's going to take a lot longer for it to cure. Epoxy putty is also called plumber's putty, and it's found any, almost anywhere in the world. So you shouldn't you should find it almost anywhere. You shouldn't be afraid to be able to go to the hardware store or call the hardware store and have it delivered to you, especially with COVID-19 going on right now. Um, try to save, stay safe and order things and sterilize it before it comes in your house kind of situation. But yeah, you should be able to order it somehow and get it delivered to you or be able to find it in a store. Um, I, in fact, I can find plumber's epoxy in a lot of instances at the grocery store in the hardware section. Um, it's, here it's called Plasti Loca. Um, Yes, 130 centigrade for baking Sculpey, exactly. Um, brand, yes, yeah, Sculpey is a brand. Uh, I do think I can find brands where I'm from. Oh, don't think I can. Polymer clay. So you can use either Sculpey. So the question is, can I, I, I can't, the person, persona, I think it's Paul, is saying they can't get Sculpey uh, where they're located. Um, that's fine, you can use air dry clay. Uh, it should be it should be acceptable, uh, and Sculpey is a brand, so you can actually get Fimu. Uh, you don't have to get uh, Sculpey. There's other there's other stuff, and uh, I'm in Mexico, and the only place that I can actually get Sculpey from is the fabric store. No one else sells it. Sells it. I can't get it at the um, I can't get it at the craft store for some reason. It, only at the fabric store. Um, there is one, one craft store I can get it from, but it's in Mexico Central and I don't, I don't want to go down there. It's too scary for uh, the COVID. So, um, yeah, just use air clay. Also, the tubing has to be metal or is it okay to use plastic? Good question. Uh, if you can find a solid plastic tubing, you could definitely use it. But the problem is um, plastic tubing, it, it needs to be really, really rigid. Um, I can think of a couple instances where I could use uh, some rigid plastic tubing. Um, you will run into problems, but plastic tubing could work for you. So if that's all you have access to, then that's all you have access to. Try to go with that. Um, you don't have to be ready for the next conference. Somebody's asking, uh, Paul's asking, if, if, can I be ready for the next conference? Um, you don't have to be ready. You don't have to have any materials right now. Your materials are for the final, okay? If you wanna follow along as I build, follow along as I build. I know how hard it is to actually get materials. Being in Mexico, it's, it makes it really difficult for me to find basic simple things like silicones and, and casting and molding materials. So I want you to feel free to be able to use what you have access to right now. And then place orders if you can for, for materials that are within your budget and that you have access to. <clears throat> We're gonna go through four different builds. 
the main ingredient that you're going to need is wire. You're going to need aluminum wire. You should be able to get it um, on animation websites for, for stop motion specifically. If you can't find a website, uh, and I'll tell you right now that probably the one that you should go to is animationtoolkit.co.uk. Um, Wes is a really good guy. He's actually shipping stuff out right now. He's not afraid of shipping things. So he's shipping things worldwide right now. So you should feel free to be able to get wired from him um, if you can't get it through Amazon or you can't get it through your local distributor, okay? Um, he also sells armature parts. You can get stuff from him in that, in that area. Uh, mention either myself or the school um, and he may be able to even give you a discount of 10%, okay? Um, so that's, that's another thing. Um, is the Zoom link the same for each week? No, you will have a very new Zoom, Zoom link next week. And that Zoom link that you get next week will be the permanent link. So you'll be able to redo that session every week at that time. Um, as they used to say on TV, same back time, same back channel. So that'll be next week's address though. And I will email that to you. So don't be afraid of, um, of uh, redoing that future address. Um, how do you spell the name of the new molding clay user? It's hard to get. Oh, called cos clay. Uh, Deborah's asking, how do you uh, how do you spell the clay? It's C O S C L A Y, and it's made by MonsterMakers.com, um, and it's the only bendable polymer clay that's on the market. There are softeners that you can add to polymer clay, but I've never used them, so I don't know. Um, can you please send a list of materials? for next class by email. Absolutely. I will send a list of what I'm going to be using in the next class to you through email. Um, so you don't have to worry about uh, being in the dark. You will have a list of materials. And in fact, I'm going to do that for every single class. I'm going to list exactly what we're going to use. And also it'll be in the video. So at the very beginning of the video, I will discuss exactly what we're using for materials and our process that we're going to go through. Okay. Um, the store, the store has all the kinds of art and animation supplies. Yes, uh, Bonnie Franklin, um, who just finished the stop motion 3D printing class. Um, hi, Bonnie. <laughs> she, uh, she suggests dickplick.com. That's D-I-C-K-B-L-I-C-K.com. That's an art store that's online. They, they are distributing and selling things right now. Um, that's mainly in the United States. Uh, they're a great company. I actually like buying from them when I'm in the U.S., um, one of my problems with my kids is I go there and I spend more than my kids do, but my kids actually wear out my wallet pretty fast there as well. So it's all art supplies, painting, sculpting, and, and stuff like that. Um, okay, and then once again, if you want an interna international distributor for armature wire, it's animationtoolkit.co.uk. Okay, you can message Wes who is the owner of that, that, um, that uh, store online and tell him you're my student at Stop Motion University, say John Akuma, you can drop my name, he knows me very well. And he should hope and ask for a discount. He should be able to give you some kind of discount or some, some kind of special on most of the materials. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the website just so you can see it. Give me one second here, because Bonnie just, shared with us the, the link. Okay, give me the animation toolkit. Toolkit.co.uk. Okay, this is the website and this is animationtoolkit.co.uk. Um, he has armature kits. They're sponsored by Artiman. He actually used to have a Ray Harryhausen uh, certified armatures kits, but uh, not anymore because you know Ray passed and I think the licensing uh, ran out. But now he has the, um, the Artiman armatures. You can order those. And we can go to Armature Parts, I believe it is. Um, let me see if I can find wire. Let me type in here wire. There we go. So there's the wire. Um, he has a lot of it. It's in millimeters. I suggest you work your way down. Go from the biggest size down. Okay. Don't go to the super small size. Super small size is for fingers. Okay. Um, so three millimeters is really good. You can get a packet of that. You can get a packet of two. You get a packet of one. You should be golden. Okay. You shouldn't need anything else. Um, that should that should get you by. Uh, one millimeter is actually really fun to use as well. Um, and uh, 
you can order all sorts of other things. He's got some tie down pieces. These are some tie down pieces. Just if you wanted to cheat, you had some kits. He actually has some armature kits. He even sells Milliput. So you can get a wire armature kit from him. Uh, and then he also sells armature parts. Let me go here real quick. Armature parts. Uh, this is not everything. Uh, for some reason, let's see, ball joints. There we go. Uh, ball joints, he's got all sorts of different sizes, different shapes. I've used, I don't see them on here anymore, but he used to have really tiny, uh, maybe this was this, this one actually, really tiny ball and socket armatures that I used to use for really fine work for clients. Uh, and they do need a little modification sometimes, but that's normal with anything that you purchase, okay? Um, you will need to usually modify things. And if you were feeling adventurous, you could also get stages. He sells stages. So you can get uh, tabletop animation stages and have them shipped to your door. All right, so that should do it. Let me go back to um, question and answers. See if there's anything else. Monstermakers.com, yeah, has monster clay. That is for uh, Shavant clay. We'll use that in the molding and casting course in the intermediate course. So we're not gonna use that in this one. So don't buy monster clay unless you're gonna do maquettes. Um, just go with polymer clays, okay? So there's two different types of clays that we really we look at, three, um, four. God, there's so many, sorry. There's oil-based or wax-based clays, which we're not gonna use in this class, okay? We're not gonna use those. Those are for sculpting maquettes and molding and casting. Push that to the side. Polymer clays like Sculpey and Fimu and Cosclay, we're gonna use those in this class. So yes. Uh, the other one is epoxy clays. Yes, we can use those in the, this class. And the last one is air clays. Yes, we can use that in this class. Uh, oh, and the other one, one more. Uh, uh, plastilina, which is an, a wax-based, oil-based clay, is what we would use for making clay animated characters. There's Van Aken, there's some other ones. I will have that material list for you next week so you can actually look at the, the different clays. If you want, because you're all students right now, you have access to the modules and to the course. You can go through the course right now and go to the different modules and there's different lectures. So you can actually jump ahead. If, you wanted to, if you're working and you wanted to listen to me ramble, <laughs> you, can, you can follow along in those sections. So wire armature builds, um, uh, block designs, foam and fabric, and build-up designs. I have lectures of those. And then our actual build lectures will be these live courses, okay? So uh, those are already pre-made for you. You can go there now. Also, there's lists of materials in those modules, so you can jump ahead as well and look at the, those lists and what's available for you to use in the class, okay? Yes, James, a paradox of choice. There's a lot of materials. Uh, it's an assignment of the puppet for the next class. Uh, I did not get the sand thing for the clay. Okay, I will discuss all the stuff with the, the class next, uh, next session. You will get an email with, with the list of materials that I'm using in the class and the process that we're gonna go through in the class, what, what the subject matters we're gonna discuss. This class was mainly just for um, an overview of what we're gonna get into and talking about and getting you prepared for you building your next character or building your first character. So once again, the assignment for next week is you need to pick a character that you're gonna build, okay? That's your first assignment. Other than that, you don't need to do anything else except get prepared to start ordering materials once you wanna start making your puppet. And you have up to one year to make that, those puppets to be able to pass the class, okay? Any other questions? Let me, um, let me un, uh, unspotlight myself. Here we go. Okay, and go to grid. Okay, we're in the grid section. And anybody, uh, you can open, you should be able to open your mic and talk if you want. If you have a, a you want to talk to me, feel free. Or, po or just click on, say hello in the, um, the chats there. And if nobody has any questions or anything to go forward, uh, we can end this class and I can see you next week and we can go from there. Um, is it Armin? Armin? Whoops. I don't know if she's doing on her phone. Maybe she's doing something on her, or her, his phone or her phone. I can't tell. Um, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Ask you to unmute. Hello. Hello. How do you pronounce your name? Armine. Armine, perfect. Yes. Okay. So, how are you doing? You have some questions or want to talk about something specific? Uh, for now, no, nothing for now. 
but okay. yeah, we'll see. <laughs> okay. I mean, lots of in information, so uh, I have to go through it again. So, but yeah, maybe it was a good session, yeah. Okay, great, great. Uh, if you, like I said before, if you have any, uh, pleasure to meet you, by the way, if you have any questions, feel okay. free to ask. Sure. I'm, I'm here for you, okay? Thank you, thank you, great job. Whoops, I stopped your video, sorry, I'm mine. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, um, I hit the wrong thing, cancel spotlight video, there we go. Okay, we're back. Yeah, there we go, okay, and let's see. I guess nobody else has any questions. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. I will see you guys next class. Um, I'm going to send you the link. Um, I'm gonna send you the link for the Zoom as of this weekend. So keep an eye on that. Um, this video is found on the Stop Motion University uh, Facebook page. So if you can't find this, um, it's there. It will also be on YouTube and there should be a link in the modules. So I want you to feel free to watch this over again if you haven't had the opportunity to uh, get all the information or if it was too much for you, you should feel free to go back. And like I said before, also feel free to, um, to communicate with me either through Messenger, uh, email at contact at stop motion magazine, or not stop motion magazine, contact at stop motion um, Email me there for class related information. Um, and then you should have access to groups as students uh, by Friday. So there's a forums that you can actually communicate and share your work with and ask each other questions uh, and provide information if somebody uh, is seeking something. Uh, and uh, yeah, that should be everything, I think. Yeah. It was a pleasure. I, I really, I really enjoyed this class. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. I thank you everybody for everything that you've done uh, in, in being patient with listening to me ramble. And uh, once again, uh, it's a pleasure and I will look forward to see you guys in the next class. Okay. Bye.